Jackie Lacey has been dragging her feet, have often, often put her hand up to the political winds and decided how to act after sensing the political winds. There have been, as you probably know, 622 people that have died at the hands of police officers in the last eight years. She has chosen to charge only one out of 622. Just a matter of odds would say to me that there'd be more than one officer who a fair-minded district attorney would believe had exercised their, their force in an unlawful manner. I want to know what part of L.A. did you grow up in? I was raised on 109th and Dinker. A one block street, Ponte Street. Ponte Street runs into the parking lot of Washington High School. My family moved there in 1968. We were the third black family on the street. And I lived there primarily through high school, going off to college in Chicago. So even though uh, you attended Dorsey, even though you lived over there? My parents broke up after my ninth grade, Henry Clay, and I lived with my father for a while before moving with my mother who lived over in Baldwin Hills. So I went to the ninth, the tenth grade at Washington High School, and then I transferred to Dorsey in the eleventh grade. It's funny, man, because I went to Dorsey because of the education in 1972. It was known for having a great educational background in the Southern League, black schools primarily because there was a sizable uh, Asian population in, in Limerick Park whose kids went to Dorsey High School. Were there a lot of Jewish students at Dorsey High School when you got there? There weren't a lot. It was probably 75% black and 20, 25% Asian and less than 10% Latin at that time. Okay, now when you were at Washington, were you exposed to a lot of the Crips, the new gangs that were emerging? Because they kind of started at Washington around 70, 71. You got there right at the kind of beginning? The Crips started with a guy with a cane at Washington High School. And that was about my, the 10th grade and then the 11th grade, I transferred to Dorsey and I took AP classes at Dorsey. So I was more moving to the educational tip. Um, taking chemistry and biology, that kind of thing. So I just escaped that, at least from, from, from the high school side. So you were a, a pretty sharp student in high school with um, these AP classes. Where did that come from? Uh, my father was a technical writer for Bechtel. They built the San Onofre power plant down in Orange County, and he used to write the public statements for that. I was the first person in my family ever to graduate from college but my father and my mother always worked um, white collar jobs at the time for a black family in the 60s growing up in LA. That was a good thing. So was it their goal from the beginning for you to go to college? Since I was 18, since I was uh, eighth grade, 14 years old, my goal had probably always been to be a lawyer, man. I always liked to talk. Since I was nine years old, I have always read a physical newspaper, except for the time when I was in college where getting the newspaper was kind of tough. So as a young child, I'd always go in the morning and wake up and read the paper before my father would take it to work. To this day, I walk out to my front yard and pick up a newspaper and read it because more than anything else, that kept me in tune with the world. I'm a com competition freak. I'm a sports fanatic from LA. And that has always enabled me to keep up with what's going on in, in politics and life. So the law was something that was always uh, my goal from 14 years old. So when you got to Dorsey, you weren't even paying attention to the street stuff that was going on because you was focused on classes, academics. Um, well, how, how did you kind of avoid all of that? I was lucky, man. One, uh, I was the smallest kid, male, in the ninth grade when we graduated, and that made me rely on my mouth and my brains as opposed to my brawn to get over in life and in the, in the hood. Uh, 
I'm a basketball fanatic. And when I realized I wasn't going to be 6'3 with my jump shot, I had to figure out another way to get to college. And that was hitting the books and trying to do it that way. Over the years, a lot of notable people have came out of Susan Miller Dorsey, including yourself. But, and um, since we're t you're a, an attorney, uh, I think she may have been two years behind you. But did you ever cross paths with Jackie Lacey while you were at Dorsey High School? I did not, and she was after me in high school. We have talked about that, how we are alums from Dorsey, and I was a big supporter of hers eight years ago when she first ran for office. I would speak very promising about what her potential would be as a black woman and the only black woman who led a major district attorney office at the time. Uh, my support for her waned over the years because as a civil rights lawyer, she has so disappointed me with her failure to prosecute wrongful conduct by police officers that I must vehemently voice my opposition to her continued leadership and support George Gascon for the DA on November the 3rd. Now, was it a surprise that Jackie Lacey would be as conservative as she was, or did people kind of, I'm sure Jackie Lacey had a career prior to becoming the DA where they knew where her leanings were at. She was always a district attorney as a, as a lawyer, and she became one of the favorites of Steve Cooley, which should have told us something. Uh, she, you know, her, there's, no, there's been no major transformation, I don't think. She is who she is, who she's always been. She has always earned the support of police unions, which is tremendously troubling to me. So the signals have always been there if we would deign to look at them. I tell my good people all the time, when there's a knee on my neck, it doesn't make a difference to me what color that knee is. And Jackie Lacey's leadership has been a knee on the necks of black and brown people in Los Angeles, I say. Okay, so you mentioned George Gascon. I feel like we don't know what he's going to do either. He's a former assistant LAPD chief. He was under, uh, I believe, Bratton for many years, and then he became a police chief in Arizona, and then he became the DA in San Francisco. I heard his DA record there didn't prosecute a lot of cops either. So what are you expecting from him if he wins this fall? I've had a chance to sit down and to meet with Mr. Gascon, asking him many of the same questions as you. I understand he is at once a police officer, he is at once a prosecutor, so there is a, a certain perspective that he has to adopt that is contrary to many of my core beliefs. At the same time, I've seen some of the things he has done as district attorney, how he has promoted the decriminalization of marijuana, uh, of police, of, of prisons as, a, as an option. Uh, I think there is a progressiveness in his heart that I have been able to see. I will indeed hold him accountable on November the 4th. But I do know, I mean, Jackie Lacey is the devil I know. And I'm looking for a change. And I think his progressiveness is encouraging for me, just as I thought her humanity and her race and her gender would be useful at the time. It is difficult for any outsider to run a DA's office. You don't know where the bodies are buried in terms of the personnel, necessarily. You don't know who has an agenda and simply wants to politically leap over others and who shares your core beliefs. In Los Angeles County, with Jackie Lacey having been so entrenched for the last eight years, it's going to be difficult for any outsider to come in and, le and lead the kind of sweeping change that I think is necessary. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the link in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.